And now, please give it up for your national treasure, it's Ponty! read where you said you were hesitant at first to get involved in making the documentary but mm. it didn't say why you were hesitant so what was holding you <laughs> well two reasons the smaller reason was making a film is very collaborative and so you don't really have control over it so you have to decide to just sort of let it happen and that's that's the thing you have to mm -hmm. think about and but mostly it's just that very irish thing i think of the idea of people running around after you you know, treating you like you're important, pointing cameras at you and all that. It's just, you know, I always think of my mother, she would say, oh, he's got notions. You know, and so there's just that slightly cringy thing about it. And that's absolutely fine when it's panty, because that's the job. But it's an entirely different thing when it's Rory. He was a lovely baby. He won a bunny baby competition. In that respect, he was very pleasant child. But I remember when he was about two, he hadn't walked. And I remember being in the doctor and he laughed at me because Rory was sitting on the floor surrounded by about 18 other children. Everybody brought him everything he wanted. So, and then when he stood up, he stood up and walked. On the very day, he never tottered or fell or anything. When he was ready to walk, he walked. And he did just what he wanted. <laughs> he still does. <laughs> How much arm twist in Connor? I, none, <laughs> I would say. Uh, Rory is a fantastic collaborator and you know I kind of knew that we've worked together we did a lot of posters together for the alternative Miss Ireland and I've seen Rory work with people like Niall Sweeney and with other people so you know in a way once we kind of got the go-ahead Rory was just fantastic because you know we would say we're gonna come and film this and you go okay we're gonna come and film that he mentioned to me in passing that he was gonna give a speech in the Abbey and maybe we should come arrive with the camera and we were like yes we'd definitely like to do that <laughs> The next time that I'm standing at a pedestrian crossing, I hate myself for it, but I check myself to see what is it about me that gives the gay away. And I check myself to make sure that I'm not doing it this time. Other people had approached me about making little documentaries and stuff, and I'd always said no for all of those reasons. But when Connor asked me, I've known him forever, we've done all his work together, I really like his work, I sort of trust him, I knew he wouldn't, you know, make a fool of me or whatever. And because he has a background in fashion photography and all that, I knew it'd look really gorgeous. So, so I thought, well, if I'm ever going to say yes, it'll be to Connor. So I thought, well, okay, let's just. I just started to feel different than the other boys. I didn't really enjoy the same things that they did. Everybody knows the local gay. I went to London and I sort of got involved in going out and clubbing and drag queens and all that stuff. I'm a great believer in destiny, and if anything convinced me even further about destiny, it's like the narrative of this film. Did that resonate with you when you were making it? That, my God, things just seem to be falling. Well, I will quote Rory in the film, uh, where at one point where Rory is talking about uh, a series of events and, says, and he says, you know, it's just nuts, nuts, nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of feels a bit like that at the moment. As a filmmaker, I'm fully aware that, you know, aside from anything else and a willing subject, we were extraordinarily lucky. And, you know, when you get that kind of luck, you go with it. I think once I got into trouble, he was really thrilled. <laughs> any soccer hooligan, any fascist, any murderer, any sex offender can get married, but you cannot. Let the gays get married and the sky will fall down. Get behind the campaign, do your bit. It's kind of hard to, to separate in some ways the making of the film from the events in the film. You know, and certainly one of the real eye-openers for me was just what, you know, a huge deal the marriage referendum was, the equal marriage referendum was, because I knew it was going to be big, I knew it was going to be important, but I think everybody in the country was just taken aback by what a big deal it was, and we were there right in the middle of it, and I wouldn't, I, there's nowhere else in the world I would rather have been with a camera on that particular day. How did this happen? It's nuts. Nuts. There's a great part in the documentary, without giving too much away, where you say that you saw life in two parts. Do you see it now in three parts after this Yeah, film? I do, because in the documentary I'm referring to the period of my life that I spent in Japan, because I feel that that sort of transformed me in some ways, whatever. Whereas now, yes, I would divide it into three parts, before Japan, after Japan, and after the whole Pantygate fiasco. Um, because in lots of other different ways, that sort of changed things too for me. So what's next? 
the, the weird thing is th that I'm still doing exactly what I've always been doing. It's just that more people are interested in it. Um, so I'm continuing to do what I've always been doing. So I'm still touring with my show and still have the bar and, you know, I have more choices now. That's the difference. I'm going to be really honest with you before we get started. I'm crapping it. While I breathe life into Panty, she breathed more life into me. 